that the back is 81 and the front is 82. So it widens by an entire centimeter going out. This is a trapezoid. <laughs> <laughs> or what, whatever that shape was. You, you know those little plastic things they used to let you play with on your desk, like when it was boring time? And they gave you the little shapes and like one of them was a hexagon. And were like, they clear? Kind of clear. And they were thin and they were they were really fun to play with. <laughs> um, but one of them was like this and then a flat side and a flat side. Oh, uh, you mean a square? No, it had the angles going But it had out. like obtuse and obscene? Oh what my, are the words? Obscene. Oh my God. Did you, which level of elementary school did you succeed to? <laughs> Today is apartment day and we have lived in our apartment for two years and apartment day it can mean just maybe you do some stuff in your apartment, watch a movie or something like that, or make a meal or anything. But what we're gonna do is not necessarily a renovation, but we're going to make something better that has kind of been a pain in the butt for me and me alone. Um, my part of the apartment could be better. Um, so I'm gonna start with explaining the closet space of a Japanese apartment. Uh, there's not much, but let's go and check out what's in the bedroom. Ow. <laughs> this is the only closet that is in the bedroom, and while the depth of it is quite far, like a whole half of a body. Do you know why it's this deep? Because the kitchen? No. Because, well, I mean... <laughs> oh, futons. Yes. Yeah. So that people can put futons. So that makes sense, but when it comes to what we actually use it for, a little bit of space is being wasted for sure. Um, Eric, this is his clothes. These are his clothes. Down here is storage, like just random things we never really go into. And up above is bedding and stuffed animals that have not found a place to be <laughs> in our lives on a regular basis, which is kind of sad. You can see that it is packed full. So then you ask yourself, where are your clothes, Katie? Um, I have no idea where my clothes were before we started the system that we have. I think I just had boxes right here. Yeah, I think you have these plastic bins down here, yeah. but like one of them with your clothes in it. And, and my clothes were here for a while. And then I just thought to myself, there's another closet. You've just come through the living room. The kitchen's over there. Now we're in the hallway. This is the front door of our apartment. And my closet is here. You may want to come to the other side of me because the door is going to open that way. Show me. Oh, we put the door back on backwards. <laughs> so you open the handle very unnaturally. And I'm still not used to it. I still try to open it like this. Almost been like a year and a half that my closet has been in here. But that's how that opens. But this is my closet. Notice the depth <laughs> does not go very far back, okay? Um, this closet came with one standard shelf. At one point I had thought about making this like a desk because you have just this one wood thing, uh, one wood, uh, what's this called? Shelf, a shelf. Um, I thought about putting like my monitor here and my keyboard and being able to type, but this hallway gets kind of cold. Um, the heater, you, we don't normally keep the heater on in this area open, so that kind of became a no game. Um, there's only that one shelf, so I've had to put in other shelves. Are these things like outside of Japan or is this a Japan thing? I think they have them outside of Japan. They look like this. Eric's gonna grab one. I'm hooked in. Here we go. Yeah, so they look like this. They expand to fit whatever like area you're using like that. And then you, you lock them in here. And then you apply tension here. Like it's slowly screwing and pushing this part yes, apart. Yes, and pushing and pushing and pushing. They, they work pretty good to be honest with you. They do, um, but with time and with any like um, power, they might fall down and that's just kind of annoying because then you got to take all your clothes out and reset it and it's it's awkward you usually need two people to kind of do this because you're holding one side um but that's what all of my shelves are except for the one built-in shelf 
this shelf, this shelf, and that shelf are all temporary. That's what I'm going to call them, is they're temporarily there. Um, I gotta say though, this really looks like some white lady shit right here. <laughs> we got these scarves and stuff. Well, you gotta have your scarves. Um, <laughs> and up here, I've actually applied like a whole bunch of different types of bars. I have no idea how you're going to shoot this. <laughs> um, there's one bar going directly back that's holding all of my hangables. Then there's another bar that's going across that allows me to like put things up here on hooks, like bags and necklaces and bras that I don't like. Um, and then this bar is for when I am uh, hanging up the, um, the clothes hanger to put my clothes away. Mm -hmm. I come and I put that here and I open it and I take down all of my clothes and fold them and put them here. So it makes it really easy to put my clothes away in that way. So all of the bar system up there I really like. Uh, I don't feel like that needs to change. The project that we're going to do today is that we're going to go to a home center and we're going to try and make more sturdy shelves that don't use tension rods. Um, I'm, I'm pretty tired of tension rods. I would say that I have rebuilt this closet yeah, every, more than 20 times. Yeah, every once in a while, go, 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 yeah. and then all of a sudden, like, he steps on the floor. So, um, <laughs> You might be asking, well, they don't stay up. One of the reasons that they don't stay up is the person who built this closet, they didn't build straight walls. The walls are a little bit crooked. So the tension that the rod has to have is uneven. Hmm. And that's, that's the reason why this ends up falling down so much. And I might be able to display that <laughs> using this. This piece of wood is completely flat against this wall on this side but there's more of a gap toward the opening of the door than there is toward the back of the door. Oh, uh, I see. There so you, you, you go. Get, you can see it you real clearly. You don't get four contact points. No, I get three and then it falls down. And you hope that you, I mean, I could put cardboard in there and then I'm trying to fish out cardboard after it falls out. Um, basically, it's worked for a while, but I'd like to upgrade. And it's apartment day, so it's a great day to do that. Um, so that's the uh, activity that we have for today. The first step is going to be taking measurements and finding out exactly how off <laughs> the straightness of these walls are. <laughs> okay, the first step wasn't measurements. The first step is actually understanding what you're working with and designing. So we're going to understand what we're working with. This piece of wood is not actually attached. It can come out, and sometimes we use it as a bench out on the balcony, which thank you to whoever created this shelf because it's multifunctional. Um, these parts, these braces, are actually nailed into the wall, and Eric's first question to me was, are you going to nail stuff into the wall? And the answer that I want is no. I don't want to make any drastic changes to the apartment that could cause us to have to pay for repairs or... Oh, this is a this is a real conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, why did I do it with the video going? <laughs> okay. So you, know, you, you ever see that, that you ever see that gif of that dog trying to get the stick across the bridge? <laughs> Look, uh, well we both succeeded. Doesn't the dog succeed in the end? He so. turns it. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, so. It, it's just braced by these protrusions of wood on the wall. I don't want to create this protrusion situation. I want to build upon this solid frame. And in comes my picture. This is my design. So here is the existing shelf, and this is the brace system underneath it. It's nailed into the wall. What I want to do is create little legs and have a shelf on top of those little legs. The legs will rest on the existing shelf um, and they'll have two legs on each side and then you'll put your shelf on top of that. Um, I th probably need to nail all that together so that it's like a small tiny table and then that table is going to go on top of this shelf. And then down here we'd be making two tiny tables that are going to go down here. Just off the floor? Yeah. So yeah, this, is, this would be the floor. Okay. So that's my plan to recreate what I already have, which is a four shelf closet with storage space below. 
Um, this is my design. Eric may have some thoughts on it. I'm not gonna call him on it. We'll talk about it on the bus ride or the train ride or however we're getting to the home center. We're going to a home center. I'm really excited about that. We don't go to the home center very often. Gonna get very distracted by everything. But now we do need to measure how big this is. And I thought about taking the wood with me, but like, how do you go up to the people at the place and be like, this is my wood, I brought it with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not gonna bring the wood. I'm gonna do all the measurements and try not to look like a crazy person who brought their own wood. I, people bring wood to the shop, right? <laughs> um, so do some measurements and then get on a bus. <laughs> we are about to have the home center experience. You have, a, you have a restaurant in here? Most of the time you just come to the home center and you're like, I gotta get this project done or I need to shop for these items. But today we are super hungry and we don't want to start this project without a full belly of food. I, I think guess, we might go insane. I was thinking that it's strange that they have a restaurant in here, but it's not that weird when you think about it. Like, remember at Lowe's in Fredericksburg, there was like a- Hoagie place? Hoagie place. Uh, like a, it, it was, was like a, a, a the Philly thing from cheese. Full, yeah, Philly cheesesteak. There's yeah. a Philly cheesesteak, like a, like a little truck out front. So I guess that's not super bizarre to have a, um, a, a restaurant where you can get food inside of a home center. And I, is, home center is the wrong word in English, right? What do they call um, them in English? Like well, Lowe's or Home Depot or... I don't know. What the, I don't know I can't what remember you what you call it. It's like is a... It? Lowe's or Home Depot would be... <laughs> like uh, a lumber yard or... Uh, <laughs> we wouldn't call it a home center, I know It's been that, a really long time since we've been in America. Now it's just... We would just, I would just call it Lowe's. Like whenever yeah. I need to go to one of those stores, right. even if it's Home Depot, I'm going to Lowe's. <laughs> you need anything from Lowe's. So we got a couple plates of yaki pasta and it's a pasta that they cook in like a wok basically if i if i'm not mistaken and katie got napolitan napolitan the picture had a uh, shrimp on it so i was pretty excited about that but there's no shrimp <laughs> and i got a um carbonara i guess is how how you explain this like a white sauce and katie got a red sauce mm. and uh we have a place that's near us that like, makes this stuff really really good so my my expectations are really high oh you about to go down son is it good no, no, no. The expectations of what this meal could be is about to expand from high to low. I don't know if you... Oh, so you don't think it's as good. Mm -mm. But then again, we got different pastas. Your pepper is really out there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fine pasta. I wouldn't call it, like, offensive. It's, I think it's better than Saizeria. You could roll in here and get... Um, regular person size, which I honestly think is a construction worker size. Yes, a and then there's a 1.5 person size, and then there's a double size. Um, we obviously went with the small one because this is big. What did you pay for these? How much did they cost? 600 yen? Yeah, it's like 650 yen. 650. <laughs> for each of them? Yes. Mm, fair enough. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it's a good lunch. I'm just happy they were open. I don't have to go anywhere else. Mm. I'm already here. It's kind of nice. Mm. How was that plate of ketchup? It was 350 grams of noodles <laughs> and then at least like 200 grams of ketchup. There was like a bottle of ketchup in there. Mm. Yours was a bummer, dude. Mine was pretty good though. I would get mine again. Like if I came here, I'd be looking forward to it. That's how I feel. I guess my bite of yours really wasn't that spectacular. Did you not get enough? I must not have get enough pepper. Tossed in the right area, mm. but, but it was fine. Yeah. I wouldn't get it again. I'd look for something else, but you know what? Mm. I'm not starving and I'm ready to work on a project without trying to kill you. <laughs> it was rough getting here. Or anyone that would be helping me, not you specifically, I should just say. Uh, basically, once you're hangry, there's no project that's gonna happen in a nice manner. No, projects in hangry are a horrible combo. Yeah, getting here, there was no talking. We're on the bus, I'm hungry.
When was the last time that you saw a cigarette vending machine? <laughs> Do these exist in your country anymore? Because I think those things all stopped happening when we lived in Virginia in the 90s. But here they are. Um, something though that they do have, this little thing down here, you have to have like a card from the government or whatever that proves your age so that you can prove that you're old enough to buy cigarettes. <laughs> uh, but all of this involves putting stuff into the walls. It's true, but it's a how to make a shelf. It is how to make a <laughs> shelf. And what, what step are we on? Number one. <laughs> Normally we try to take our masks off where possible, but the doors to the building in the non-eating section said, keep your masks on. So this will be quite a maskful video. Um, a home center is a lot like what you would think of being at Lowe's or Home Depot or a home improvement place in America. <laughs> we had to um, look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> uh, some differences here are that you can get like detergent or a bicycle or some other home things that aren't just like building things or repairing the plumbing or putting in a new sink. I don't know if you can get a sink here. Yeah, I think so. You think so? You can hold it. Look at these pipes. Look at these pipes. <laughs> um, but starting with our project, the first thing that I thought I should do is if they have prefabricated things, I need to consider those before thinking like I'm gonna jump into fabricating something myself. So we came over to these racks over here and they look great. They fit, they would be the right size, but I can't get the width and the height that I need together. You can either get the width like perfect and it's gonna be a skyscraper in the closet we're gonna have to readjust the height of the closet. Um, or you can get one that's shorter, or uh, not as wide, and is the right height. So it's kind of a bummer. I thought, wow, we might be finishing this video pretty quickly, but no, you're at the home center. You're gonna be here a while. 91 seems like a pretty big, exciting number. <laughs> stoked about 91. <laughs> They're stoked about 91. <laughs> I'm stoked about 81. <laughs> I'm not winning the lottery on size here. We are fully immersed. We, we went through all the options of prefabricated things, even into kind of like mildly prefabricated things and nothing seemed like it was gonna fit just, just perfect. So we've decided that we're gonna need to make this out of wood. We have consulted apps with all of our measurements to determine what size wood we need to use and how much we can get out of our wood. Now, I need to take that app and I need to put it on a grid piece of paper because this is how Japan works, with paper and pencil. There's no digital option for this. Did you bring your honko today? I didn't bring my honko, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure we're going home and I'll need to get my honko. All right, lots of success going on. I took the doodle that I made to a man who's over in the cutting section. Well, hold on, you took a doodle that the internet made and then put it on a piece yeah, of paper. <laughs> yeah, thank you, internet. So I put that doodle on here and I had some chats with him and I saw the way that he goes about cutting things. He sees the dimensions in a different way than I did. So I had to sort some of my numbers around, but he saw exactly what I wanted and we reduced the number of cuts that we're going to make in this gigantic board that he helped us put onto this rolly cart. And, uh, because they charge per cut. Because they charge per cut. And every cut is 30 yen without tax. What's tax on 30 yen? Like a micro yen? Uh, three yen, because net 10%. That's 10%. <laughs> um, so uh, now we are going to take this piece of paper and this piece of wood over to the service counter. They're gonna do all those calculations. And then we go back to our helpful man that's over in the cutting area and we get to listen to the blade. Oh crap. Come on grandma, you got it. He came over and told me to check his work, so... Oh, that is 810 millimeters. <laughs> 300 right on the dot, wow. 
And this machine is incredible. It's bigger than him and the blades are coming from the sky and big things are pumping up and then things are getting cut. And it's so cool. <laughs> The sun is going down in the sky and we are finally out of the home center. Uh, it's really not that late. The sun has been going down a lot earlier now. I'd say it's around about four o'clock and we started this adventure 11.30 noon um, and we had lunch in the middle and transport time. So, and brain time because it took me a long time to understand the dimensions of a very flat sheet of wood and measurements for shelves. But now I've got three shelves. Watch, this shit's not gonna fit in there. No, <laughs> it's not gonna fit. <laughs> Something's wrong, I know. There was I know. always something wrong. We got some nails too, which is handy. Yep, um, so now we're gonna go and head in the direction of home. Maybe we'll get a sweet treat on the way. Right outside of the home center, we walk like a block away and they're, we're looking for a sweet treat or fika or something. And I they're- this from a mile away. <laughs> there's a little like, um, classical Japanese style snack shack. And they have their meibutsu, their speciality is yaki dango, which is what Katie has there. And they also had shio daifuku, which is like a salty mochi. And yaki dango is also sort of like a mochi, right? It's like, it's, it's mochi, yeah, yeah. mochi balls, rice balls. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this shouldn't be sweet at all, but it should be a fika. Uh, this is to our apartment. Oh, to our oh, apartment day, uh -huh. yeah. So it's almost like a soy saucy, saucy sauce. <laughs> the first time I had this, I was like, that's wrong. It's so good. And now I'm like, sometimes I get a craving for it. Like just that flavor and this like, not sweets, but sweets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is a really soft, chewy-ish type of thing going on. But like in the best way. But the flavor of it is so good now. I love it. But I remember when we first moved here, I hated it. Mm. I got it. We got it once. Somebody gave us some of it. And I was like, oh God, this is really bad. Because I think you go in wanting a sweet treat and you leave with not a sweet treat at all, but it's still a treat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, yeah. Do you but think if you don't know what you're getting into, then. The, oh yeah. She also warmed it up for us. And um, the yaki part means it's been grilled and you might be able to see that it's uh, got those black bits on it. And that's just the, the grilling process. It's done that for you. And this is a daifuku? Yeah, it's a shio daifuku. So it's shio, a... so it's got kind of like a saltiness to it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely bound to be some heavy beans in there. Yeah. This is heavy work over here. Norm wow. Normally I don't think we would pick this, but it was just like labeled as like the, the speciality or whatever. It tastes like batter. Does it just taste like batter? Yeah. And then you get the beans, but the outside just tastes like bisquick before you Mm. Juiced up with it. I think the salt is in the beans. I think that the salt is everywhere. <laughs> it's all right, but I think I prefer the dongo better. I like both of them. Mm. I always, whenever I make something that is like biscuity or whatever, I'm always like having a little bit of that stuff before it's baked. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that'll make you explode if you eat all like of the stuff. Like when you eat the raw cookie dough? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to do this, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyways. I don't think I'm ready to be embarrassed if it doesn't fit. <laughs> Did you already check? No. Uh, no. We're, we're together on this. What do you mean? I didn't measure nothing. We're not together. Oh, I thought you were trying to offset Every, some blame. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, man. If it doesn't fit, I'm going to be real, real sad. It's kind of hard to get this in. If nothing else, it'll fit in an angle. Oh yeah. Is it good? Yeah, it's looking good. Obviously, it's it fits. It's wider at the opening than it is at the back. <laughs> but, ah! Okay, measurements were good. So our three shelves are great. But now what we need to do is adjust like how we want all of our levels. And we made like various sizes of legs. We have two bags full of like random legs. We have. Um, 20 centimeters, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So variable heights and a 30. The, the down below has to be a 30. So now the puzzle begins of heights.
The thing about all of this is that DIY projects like where you do things like this are kind of not super big in Japan the way they are in America. It seems like it's slowly becoming more of a thing, but it's not something especially that people are like super into living in Tokyo especially because you don't really have the the place to do things like that with the small apartments and with how close you are to all your neighbors and everything, like you couldn't just be like sawing away, you'd be annoying everybody. So we're actually gonna be pounding in a few nails here. And to me that feels a little weird, mm. but it's like five in the afternoon on a Saturday. So I think it'll be fine for 10 minutes while we pound in a couple of nails. It's not like you're gonna ruin the neighborhood or whatever. But um, it, when you go to the home centers and stuff, it's mostly like construction worker people that are doing things that are in the area with like where we were with the wood and things. And then everything else is like people doing small little projects, like simple little things. Uh, cleaning projects and things. That's yeah. what's basically going on at the home centers. That's why the pasta was uh, c construction man size. Like oh, 350 yeah. <laughs> grams of pasta is not normal. Like that that was a mega man size. And then so, yeah. Plus the 350 they, grams they of need, ketchup you ate. <laughs> they know their, uh, their audience there at the home center. Right now, one of the... the um, bars in here one of my shelves has collapsed oh, and yeah. it's resting on some other crap that's in there and <laughs> i didn't even realize that it was broken <laughs> so i think the next step you have to do is to get everything out of your closet yeah you gotta get the shark and bring it over here i'll go get the shark the shark is right behind you <gasps> i already got it there's dust bunnies in my closet oh i bet there are we got this, this little the shark. shark vacuum cleaner it's great <laughs> Earlier we talked about like these tension rod shelves and I've removed one of those and we have replaced it with the setup for my new first shelf. This is the bottom shelf, it goes down to the floor, but we did not account for one important thing and that is, oh so hard to see, there's a lip down here. I know that you can't see oh, it. You can see it down there. Okay, there is a lip down here that is on the floor and we didn't realize that existed. So that's added a good centimeter to the height of this shelf, which hopefully that won't be a hindrance as we continue to go up, but sometimes you just don't account for certain things, but we sorted out and made it work. Um, another shelving option that you might find at the Hyakuen shop. These you'll normally buy at like Ikea or at... Um, no, they're like at the Hyakuen shop at like 500 yen. Okay, 500 yen at the Hyakuen shop or Nitori will have them and they might be a little better quality. Um, here's the option that you'll get from uh, Daiso. And let me see if I can get this off. These are just tension rods. You can get one, maybe even two for 100 yen and then you can purchase these shelves to go on top of them. They hook onto the tension rod very easily. I'm doing a great job at explaining this. Um, so they just hook right onto the tension rod and create a shelf for you. And it's worked out pretty well, but I'm tired of these holes. So I'm happy to be moving on from this. Eric, you are caught in my nest right now. Yeah. Eric calls this this situation we're in where I've created a project so big that it just surrounds me like a small planet or like I'm the, I'm the planet and everything is orbiting around me in this project. What do I call um, it? Case floating. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the tiny little hallway we're in. <laughs> oh, this feels so good. You gonna sell those on Craigslist? Nah. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna put them in the closet and be like, for a rainy day. Dude, when I was little, I used to karate chop this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but now I use it to construct closets. <laughs> I got you good. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> So we bought some nails, thinking that we were going to nail this situation in, but we have decided against having such a permanent structure. And that sounds like a bad idea, but it's not, because we came up with an idea that still uses these stupid suspension rods, <laughs> but it doesn't uh, rely on them mm, so much. 
Um, my entire closet has been set up now. I can sit here and pound on this and push on it and it's not gonna fall down. I am stupid happy right now. Apartment day 2020 is the best. Um, I, I wouldn't say it looks as amazing as I thought it was going to look, but it is so functional and functional matters to me so much more than something looking good. Whew. Um, the suspension rod is actually going to go in to the back and it's going to force these panels on the walls to stay to the side. That's what we want. We want them to stay to the side so they don't fall in. If one of these panels down here falls in, the whole structure falls down. Well, at least from here down to there. And the suspension rod is going to cause it to just stay to the side, but nothing's putting weight on the suspension rod because all my clothes are going to be on the actual shelf. So the suspension rod gets to do its job of the outward instead of dealing with the weight. And that will make it so that we don't have to use uh, nails. And what that also allows for is that if I decide I want to change the size of my shelf, since we used that gigantic board at the, um, at the home center, we got variable sizes of legs. So I'll probably just put these in a closet, this closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know where these are gonna go, but I can determine which size that I want and I can change the size as life goes on. And I'm, I'm pretty happy having that flexibility and it'll be very easy to remove this shelving system. Nothing is permanent. And that is a really cool thing. And I was worried about getting it out once we put the nails in. Cause like when we move out, eventually we're gonna have to pull this thing apart. And... Never leaving this apartment. <laughs> celebrate the apartment. We love the apartment. So you might be asking like, how much did this cost? And for under 6,000 yen, we have managed to create a shelving structure that's way better. Uh, that includes the wood and it includes all the cutting that happened since you had to pay 30 yen per cut. I have no idea if that's expensive or cheap. I don't know what wood costs. Things that cost 30, oh, you're talking about the wood? Yeah. I thought we were just talking about the cuts and I was like, things that cost 30 <laughs> yen, not expensive. Yeah, but I mean, like, the big piece of wood was like almost 5,000 yen. That's like 50 bucks. Yeah, but we, we saw like ones that were already pre-cut and that would have put us almost up to 8,000 yet mm -hmm. and when we found the big board and it was almost half the price i was like okay we're gonna figure out how to make the big board work for us and it's sort of like finished kind of not finished but it's not like outside wood you know what i'm saying like it's yeah. kind of nice the way they've sanded it and stuff and eric says my clothes are gonna smell like trees for a while and i'm pretty excited about that um and the prefabricated stuff that we saw, like uh, the first thing that I looked at, we were looking at a, over $100 mm -hmm. to have that work. And they didn't even have stuff available to make it so that it would be custom for this closet that's weirdly shaped. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a really, really good apartment day. Thanks to our Patreon supporters for making our videos possible. If you'd like to help us make more videos in the future, check out the link down below. Of course, liking and subscribing helps too. A series from the Japanese island of Sado is up next. I kind of like having a really stupid dog. <laughs>